What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there? It's Phil 20. I'm back. Check us out. We've got this Yellow Jacket Titan Manifold set. Now, I've got some uh, ups and downs with this thing, and we're going to go over those real quick all right so we've got this backpack a nifty little backpack which is the first time i've ever seen a, you know backpack manifold so it's kind of cool uh drawbacks with the backpack i'll go ahead and unpack it the whole thing so you can see it's got a little bit of literature with it nothing special it's got your micron gauge uh, actually it's not a micron gauge it's a micron sensor it's got a charge cable and it's got two extension cables for the thermocouples here is the device that we're looking at it's the yellow jacket uh, p51 870 titan digital manifold set for refrigeration made in the united states okay that's the top side, which is kind of weird. I don't actually like this bag a whole lot. Uh, oh, when I got this, it was brand new and the uh, strap was broken. So obviously either they're rushing these to get them out the door or they just don't care a whole lot about the bag. And it comes with your standard Titan manifold set hoses. And when I say standard, they are very standard because they do not have the low loss fittings. They have the grandfathered fittings, which is ridiculous to even know that we're still using these fittings new with even a nice manifold set. That's kind of crazy. Why do you send me this garbage knowing I'm not going to need it? I don't need it. I can't even use the only holes I can use here. by code is this one it's because it's not going to be pressurized i'm just going to be pulling a vacuum with it you know i digress let's move on besides the hoses you know they are uh, 3000 psi hoses your standard uh new uh, 600 psi working pressure hoses so they should work their bur burst pressure is 3000 the uh, run pressure is 600 now let's uh talk about the bag here uh, i'm not a fan of this bag you know it's got some good compartments you know the bag it's uh, kind of hollow because it's, this is a uh, piece of velcro on the inside you can see the garbage velcro you know why do you use velcro on a tool bag that's going to be holding something that has weight. Now this has a you know a decent amount of weight. I'm not sure the exact weight, but it, it feels hefty and solid. It feels like I don't know if the manifold set does, uh, but it's got Velcro straps, you know, for this thing, and they're relying on these hoses to be underneath to hold this up, which is ridiculous. Why can't you just sew it in? why i don't understand you could just sew it right here all the way around the four sides nothing will fall through you can put your manifold set in there and you won't have nothing else from the bottom falling in and out you know for instance these adapter connectors you know if they fall through you lose it on the grass somewhere it's terrible because you know you got to open it off uh one good a few good things got some compartments uh you know you got your it's got three compartments for any kind of, you know, electrical pins or whatnot, or, you know, just, you know, simple screwdrivers, etc. And then you got your sock uh, hole creator. This is perfect for making, uh, losing tools. What will happen is this will ride around in your tool bag or whatnot, and then hole, you know, this whole thing is going to rip open at the bottom eventually. You're putting tools in there that weigh anything, they just put a hole in it because it's it straps like if this leather part if your you, you know your tools went to the leather part 
probably a lot better and probably wouldn't tear up in a shorter period of time. But right here, it's just gonna, your tools are gonna sit right here and they're gonna poke holes through it. Whatever kind of tools, say a screwdriver or something. You know, gotta get to the next call, gotta hurry. It's the same side, same thing as the other side. You can put a meter or something in here. No big deal. So that's the backpack. Besides the handle, it's a really nice handle. It's a single shoulder strap, left or right shoulder. Uh, I think the backpack's a really good idea, but they did, went about it all wrong. This sock is a terrible idea. Why can't you just give me a piece of cloth over it? Or give me something that's durable, you know, like the rubbery feeling on the bottom. Uh, it's got fronts, front place for simple stuff. But yeah, let's just uh, move on. Now, the reason why you're even watching this is not because of that backpack, but uh, the backpack is an important tool that is included to keep this protected. And this thing is kind of uh, sensitive, I would assume, that's why they gave you the backpack. So to power on this device, you just press the power button, it quickly goes straight to it. Now right now we've got this in PSI G mode and uh, you can do data logging with it so here's where you would look at your data logging also the, the logging can be recorded and put onto your desktop computer if you wanted to switch back and forth now you've got these thermocouples okay and you've got a, the thermocouple they uh, kind of short uh, you know all these wires are short it did come with extensions for your thermocouples, which is convenient, which is totally cool. But one bad thing about these extensions, they don't fit on this tool here. This tool will not work with the extension. The extension is a three terminal, three wire connector, and this is a four terminal wire connector. So that it don't work with an extension like this. You'll have to buy an aftermarket extension female to male connector. And we'll show you that here in a bit. So basically on the back side of this, you've got two locations where you can put your clamp meters on. And then you've got your uh, T1 and T2. That's temperature one, temperature two. And I can demonstrate that they both work at the same time, but you'll get the idea. So i put it on the superheat side. Now, if you take a closer look into this, it shows superheat, which is uh, currently 122 degrees superheat, but there's nothing hooked up to it. If I just uh, put the clamp on my finger, the temperature will start to change and rise. So it rised now it's 132, 131 degrees superheat. Uh, it's, you know, doesn't have refrigerant flow and so it's really not that big a deal. Uh, you can change between a huge amount of refrigerants here. You can, you know, it just, there's a bunch of refrigerant that you can change to. So all these are different refrigerants, 125 or more. It's, I know it's 100 and something. It's a good amount. Uh, it's also got some really nice features that include emailing your refrigerant stuff to like so you got a problem with a unit your technician goes out he don't know what's going on and you're not there because you're working somewhere else your technician can pull this out go ahead and uh, hook it up hook up the temperature sensors and the refrigerant lines to the system email you what's uh, what the pressures are and you can just like hey maybe you, you should go check out this that's a good way to resolve a problem quickly uh, you know just by him sending out an email to you just like that you can you can look at it and have the problem resolved quickly there may be a way to send it through text messages but I could be wrong on that now, there's also an app for this as well, and it's Bluetooth Wireless. Now, 
right now you see it flashing I believe yeah it this light when it's on even if the screen is off is flashing now if you can see here on this phone you can go to pressure and temperature and then you know use GPS to find elevation it, you know it's really nice features here to find your uh, atmospheric elevation you know all that stuff uh, and then you would go to find a new one you would click on continue and then you would go to not specified and then it's going to show YP, YJP 51 yada 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 you're going to click on this box and then you're going to click on the save button in this corner here and it's going to activate this model immediately now we'll go ahead and click on this and well let's go back here let's click on uh, this or this we should be able to uh, there's more to this app there's quite a bit to this app here Okay, now we're pulled out to the nitty gritty of the app. Now remember I told you we got super heat and then over here would be your sub cooling, your target super heat temperature. It, you would calcu it calculates this stuff for you. Like the temperature, wet bulb inside, dry bulb outside. You're going to find out all these temperatures and, uh, and then you're going to calculate it in this area. Okay, so it targeted sub cooling or whatnot. So you'll put in your target superheat or target subcooling, and then you'll click on save. You'll send an email to, you know, save it, send an email to your, your boss or whatever, and then you're done. Now, there's also something else. Let's say, hey, something's happening with a system, and it's leaking refrigerant, and it's weird. Like, I've had customers have uh, vandals come out and vent the refrigerant so they can get high. So what you would do to test and see if the system is leaking refrigerant is go ahead, pull all the refrigerant out of the system, pull a deep vacuum into it, and then you can test it right there. Target time for your uh, vacuum, it says 13 minutes. It's not going to be 13 minutes for pretty much almost any system that's uh, not running. But if it's running, you could probably get a good amount of the refrigerant out. But you can do, uh, you know, confirm the settings for the... Uh, and then you know 500 microns is what you're going to try to reach with your micron gauge uh, oops so you're going to try to reach 500 microns or so and we'll do a quick start confirm all right so here's your micron settings that's when you hook up your micron gauge right now it says nothing because i don't have the micron gauge hooked up let's see if i can plug it in and see if it says anything so i plugged it in and it pulled up 100,000 microns. So it'll, it'll show you 100,000 to one micron on this micron gauge on this one. And you can also see the micron gauge here. It says evacuation right there, and it'll pull it up. And uh, I think it's not set for microns. Yep, yeah, that's correct. We gotta click on microns out right there. And then we go to back. All right, now we're back at 100,000 microns. I haven't tested to see if this works as good as my Super Evac uh, 1 to 750,000 micron gauge, but I'm assuming it will do just as good as job as the. Uh, and if you look here on the back, it's got like a waterproofing, you know, a little bit of waterproofing, you know, not while it's running though. So the, the thing is, whenever you hook up your uh, connectors or whatnot they're not sealed so water can get right inside of there and here's where you charge it as well like if you're having trouble with the system you know if you're running low on battery you can take a battery pack and just plug it straight in right there you, you know your lithium battery packs you plug it in and it'll charge and work at the same time um, What's really nice about it is it's got the Wi-Fi technology, the Bluetooth technology in it, uh, and that keeps the display off. 
Now, since I've got this thing, it's been on 80%. I haven't done a whole lot of work with it, but it's definitely been on 80% the whole time. And it is pretty nice. Now it says pressure hold. There's another testing for your system. It allows you to test the pressure, walk away from it, and see if it's fluctuating. So you, what you would do is you would add nitrogen to the system uh, to a certain pressure, and then you will allow a tolerance by percentage. Right now it says 0.1% test, and then you should hold that for five minutes or whatnot. Well, that really depends on the system and the temperatures outside. So if you want to increase to like 5%, you know, which is kind of ridiculous. If you're losing 5% of your uh, 100 PSI, which is 5 PSI, probably going to be leaking. So you wouldn't want to go that high. You know, you go to uh, 2 or 3% at the maximum, in my opinion. Uh, then you would just, you know, go to continue. And then the pressure will start. And it'll say if it fails, and then you'll restart after you have uh, located a leak, and then you'll be good to go. So this thing is pretty awesome. Right here, the bag sucks, the hoses suck, but other than that, it's pretty nice. Uh, the wires are short, so I mean, this is the length of that. And if you know you got your sis, your hoses. You know, set up onto uh, an industrial unit, which is this is designed for industrial use. If you got your equipment hooked up and you've got this manifold set not laying right on top of the compressor or right on the ground beside the unit or on the roof or whatever you're working, you know, this ain't gonna work. So you have to put these extensions on there, which is, you know, a terrible, terrible thing for having short wires. I can't stand having short wires for the price of this. You get a really good value for the price. It comes with a micron gauge. It comes with a manifold set. It comes with easy recording. It comes with hoses, but it didn't come foolproof. Uh, you know, you still gotta know what you're doing to work with this. We'll see you later. This is Phil 20 with solar power, electricity, and electronics. See you later. Hello ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.